today's hot topic webinar. Uh, together with Admirals here, we want to talk about the Roblox IPO once again, um, and especially we want to focus on the video gaming sector, which is currently, well, can certainly be considered hot as, um, um, based on the fact that we are um, yeah, still within this corona lockdown pandemic um, aftermath and uh, some or many countries probably still in lockdown mode to some extent, home office and all that. And in this context, um, certainly gaming stocks are of interest due to the fact that gaming in general is um, a hot topic with Roblox. Uh, we've seen already one of the uh, biggest and hottest IPOs in 2021 but and this is something i'd like to add right here right at the beginning um i was that was probably five minutes ago i was about well roblox ipo yes we want to have a look at this but the problem is that roblox uh, and its ipo that wasn't that fascinating let's say so you 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 had some 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 serious wings um certainly but from a trading perspective i'm not really sure if i'd use the roblox ipo if there was a mentee coming to me as a trader well i'm also a coaching people so people come to me ask me about let's say an ipo what's common for an ipo ipo what are uh the the, the common traits the characteristics of an ipo and i'm not really sure whether i would probably pick Roblox or take the most recent one, Coinbase, because Coinbase um, Coinbase went public last week. It's a crypto exchange. So it has nothing to do with gaming in general, but to explain um, IPOs and, and understand it in a better way and, and also point out why it's so interesting to focus on these IPOs, beside the fact that we also want to focus on the video gaming sector today. I um, choose to uh, screenshot a, um, a chart, which I prepared here for a tutorial in German. So you will see that there's some German um, 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 notes within that. But we want to use this chart to give you a better idea on why this um, IPO of Roblox, not just from a gaming perspective, but also from a trading perspective, was that interesting. And that's something I'd, write, I'd, I'd like to say right at the beginning here. But we, before we start and before we look at everything, um, let's have a look now at today's slides. Before we start, also, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel from Admirals. Don't forget to uh, leave a comment in the uh, box chat box below. If you have any suggestions, any questions, um, if you're watching this recording, then on the on the YouTube channel especially, and and you probably have a question um, resulting out of what I present to you, feel free to ask the question right there. If you have um, suggestions for uh, upcoming topics, please leave them there. Um, what else? Thumb up would be nice. I, I appreciate it um, a lot. And uh, so now let's start. Let's have a look here at my screen. By the way, one thing also <laughs> probably interesting, uh, also here for the chat box and the comment box um, uh, in, in the Zoom event, which is also taking place right now. Um, let me, by the way, open the uh, YouTube page here. In the morning, um, this is a this is my my backup solution. Let's call it. Uh, in the morning, my um, hard drive just uh, collapsed, and uh, um, so my my usual my 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 um, laptop I usually use. Um, I I don't have it right here right now. So it could be that there's some changes um, in in the way you're currently seeing my screen. And if that's the case, please feel free to also add this here in the uh, uh, chat box. So I am also now here. Let me just type in hello traders on YouTube so that I not missing any questions. If there's anything um, different from what you used to uh, see um, in our latest um, 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 webinars, Trading Spotlight webinar last Friday, please feel free to leave a comment so that I can change it accordingly. But right now, I think everything should be fine. Um, so it should be that that we have here uh, after the Roblox IPO, which video gaming stocks are also hot. So that's it in terms of, of my personal issues, let's say, and my person probably enough. Um, uh, so my name is Jens. I'm a trader. I'm located in Berlin, Germany, but um, I'm very, very uh, blessed to be here together, together with um, Admirals, um, Global Financial Service Provider. Um, Admirals was Admiral Markets is still Admiral Markets, so it's the same company, but is currently seeing um, a rebranding, facing a rebranding. Uh, this is due to the fact that Admirals um, or Admiral Markets started out as a, as a, as a classic um, Forex and CFD broker. 
um, is probably one of the uh, biggest um, uh, financial service providers in this space and is now also aiming for a broader um, audience in terms of financial services um, like credit card, for example. So um, in this context, they decided to rebrand and Admiral Markets is now getting Admirals. And so this is where you where you um, 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 probably um, now find admirals.com where you usually where, where you were used to find admiralmarkets.com um, here in Germany probably one one side note um, I already said I'm, I'm a trader so um, that's probably of interest for you here in Germany once we talk about um, uh, brokers usually um, admirals is considered to be really uh, the so-called DAX expert so with the um, highest competitive offering when it comes to DAX trading in the uh, CFD space um, it's not just from a from a cost perspective, so cost of doing business, um, uh, but also from an order execution perspective, for example, which is also to some extent at least part of um, um, cost of doing business slippage. Um, so getting getting um, um, a worse than usually anticipated price, for example, once you're getting executed. Um, I can already say, based on personal experiences, also trading life uh, with Admirals here, that um, this is definitely worth a deeper look once you're looking for a broker. Um, if you're currently looking for a broker, you're an experienced trader, let's say, um, and, and you have one, certainly give Admirals um, a deeper look. If you're a beginner, um, you have a fully regulated and very, very competitive bro broker in terms of um, commission um, 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 uh, from a commission perspective. So. Um, to make long things short, admirals.com is definitely the website where you uh, should have a deeper look at the details there around admirals. And uh, now we want to start with today's agenda, have a look here at what we want to focus on and what we want to what we want to uh, look at today. So first of all, we want to look um, back at the Roblox IPO, as I already said at the beginning. It wasn't that yeah, fascinating. It was, it was a big IPO, it was a um, hot IPO. It was a IPO with a buzz around. Um, I will um, give you some, some, some um, ideas of why this is of interest, especially for professional traders, experienced traders, because um, usually you have plenty of information available. When uh, a, a company goes public, there's usually not just there's not that many information available. It's like the opening print, you have kind of a reference price probably. Based on the reference price, you have some kind based on the opening print, then an idea of whether there's a certain um, um, level of demand. Um, you know, case of Roblox is fascinating to, to note, and that's also true for Coinbase, which is why I want to do also a little around this topic here, a little deeper into that matter. Um, it was a direct listing, so there's no real support from a T1 bank in this um, context, which can be expected once a certain level breaks. Case of Roblox, everything went very smoothly. Case of Coinbase, we nearly collapsed 100 US dollar. That's one of the reasons why it's so interesting to, to give it a deeper look. Um, yeah, so when after we did this, um, looking back at the IPO, giving some uh, input for traders, we also want to uh, dig deeper into the overall and global gaming sector, gaming market, and uh, give also an idea for investors, longer term investors who are currently looking for um, um, hot sectors and where to invest their money from a longer perspective. And in this context, then, I'll give an idea on my top three gaming stocks. Certainly, Roblox is one of them for reasons we already mentioned in an earlier webinar, but there's also two others. And this is um, something we wanna then look at in the, uh, um, uh, in the last minutes of this, of this webinar. So first of all, now let's have a look here at the Roblox IPO. And um, you can use this information now really, to be honest, you can really use this information and um, duplicate it on the Coinbase IPO we will look later on. So it doesn't really matter probably some differences, but um, um, all in all, we can say in general, what you now can see and read here in terms of the Roblox IPO is also something which is true for the Coinbase IPO. So um, instead of uh, conducting an ordinary underwritten IPO, that's the like, classic IPO we see, um, uh, which means that you have a set offered price in this context. And um, this is the usual way a company goes public. Roblox conducted a so-called direct listing of its shares. So, which means nothing more that they um, that that they offered um, these shares to the public at whatever price investors were willing to pay for them. Um, and this is this is interesting in this context because um, 
uh, first of all, what, what does it mean for the company? Well, instead of um, using the IPO, then if a company goes public, usually it, it, it uses such a, such a step to raise cash. Um, Roblox simply allowed the people who currently own the shares, so former employees, and, and this is also a usual way to, um, um, to, to um, compensate people working for you for a started con company, to not just pay you a salary, but in addition to that, also pay you a shares of the um, underlying company. Um, what, what the IPO um, um, allowed these shareholders, these owners, is... Um, to um, um yeah to to sell them to the public and and to cash in on their on their on their holdings and on their um, gains which resulted out of the fact that they built a company really from scratch and um so what they did was that they offered in total um 196.7 million class a shares of um, um roblox in this context and roblox itself did not receive any pro proceeds from the sale um, and uh, what's also interesting in this context is, again, that the direct listing, um, so the, let, or let's, put it, let's put it differently. So if, if you have a classic IPO, then you usually have an underwriter, tier one, especially if it's a hot IPO and, and Roblox was um, supposed to be one of the biggest IPOs in 2021, certainly. I mean, Coinbase with a market cap first print of 100 billion, as we will see, was um, um, a little bigger than that. But still, um, you had a... IPO with, which had a buzz and 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 people were really focused and and and, and anticipating this this IPO looking for it forward to it. Um, and the thing is that usually you have in such an environment um, tier one investment banks um, who underwrite this um, 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 IPO. And so the thing is that if you have such a um, highly anticipated IPO and the street is watching the um, uh, company going public and the stock being traded um, um, and then um, at, a, at a stock exchange. Um, usually you don't want to be embarrassed in front of your clients, respectively in front of your uh, direct competitors um, if, you, if you're working um, or if, you, if you're working on Wall Street. So simply speaking. So that means if you're Goldman Sachs or if you're Morgan Stanley or if you're JP Morgan or whoever, um, and you, you, um, um, you are here to, to, to um, support such, a, such an IPO or to, to, to um, um, help the company to go public, you want to make sure that certain um, prices, for example, are not broken on the downside. Let's say, let's assume, therefore, you have an IPO price of, let's say, 50 US dollar. And uh, then there's a certain open drive, as you will see, for example. And, and, and again, and this is one of the reasons why I think Coinbase is a better example, because there you can really see that. Um, it was, again, it's like a textbook example, to be honest. So if, if I will ever be asked from someone, please give me an example on the um, uh, on the um, IPO from from a company or how to trade an IPO, I certainly use Coinbase over Roblox. Um, even though the idea behind this, the psychology behind this, is still the same. So what you will see is probably there's an opening drive, and then the stock there's some kind of, of selling resulting out of the fact that there is some um, a profit taking taking place or something like that, the stock drops. It drops down to the IPO price. And then you will usually see the underwriter supporting the stock. So the investment bank will say, well, we don't want to be embarrassed in front of our clients slash in, our, in front of our competitors. And if the IPO price was, let's say, 50 US dollar, we will make sure that the price does not break and, and we are trading lower from here, but support the stock there and try to um, um, create some kind of demand to push the price higher from here and um, keep that. Let's say it's a, it's a Thursday, probably keep that into the late hours of Friday and then just step away. And then the selling pressure starts to, to play out. And then the stock price drops the IPO price finally into the closing of the week, for example. Um, but then... It's, it's not the case anymore that everyone is looking at this IPO. So that being said, um, uh, you, you, we could see that it was a successful IPO, despite the fact that there was no such underwriting um, um, in, in, um, 
intervening here and supporting the stock price because it was necessary. There was um, over the whole day, as we'll see in the in the chart in the next slide, there was continuously um, um, demand for the for the for the stock, and um, that helped here um, to stabilize the price of the um, 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 Roblox share price to stabilize it above the first opening print, which was at forty six. At, I'm sorry, sixty four point fifty. Um, that being said, by the way, so that first print gave the a company um, a market cap of 42 billion and the reference price, by the way. So that was already something which was mentioned um, some days earlier was 45 around. So that was all in all um, a very successful IPO. And uh, the reference price here was in lieu of um, a formal IPO price and uh, is based on recent private market transactions, which is kind of interesting because this is something uh, which um, rang a bell, at least in my opinion, uh, when it came to the Coinbase IPO, there the reference price was set at 250 US dollar, even though these private market transactions around one month earlier, early, early March, took place um, in a range between 350 to 370 um, USD, which already created the um, impression that there's um, for whatever reason, um, um, some some skepticism around um, um, around this IPO, or that they somehow tried to at least create um, 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 the illusion of of stronger demand there. I, I'm not really sure why, why that was the case, but it was massively below these these um, um, recent private market transactions in case of Coinbase. But let's come back to 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 uh, Roblox here. So that's that's what I'm referring to. And that was the um, um, trading which took place, as you can see here, um, on the 10th of, of um, March. It was a Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken. And then we have here the 11th, the 12th, 15th, 16th. So as you can see, there was stable demand. And we were all the time, that was the first print here. That was um, um, 64.50 in this context. There was only a small flush into the open after the opening. And then from there, we saw strong demand holding the price above that level, which is kind of strong. I mean, this is this is really like, this is underlying our thesis here, where we say the gaming sector right now is hot. It's it's a very simple way to put it. I've also um, um, some some details here. Um, 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 on the on the uh, on the on the side, 64 IPO price, and uh, this is the thing. So while IPOs, that's exactly what I already mentioned. While IPOs usually offer clear levels to trade off, Roblox IPO wasn't very attractive trading wise. Again, yeah, this this is not this is usually not what we want to see. We want to see um, clear levels uh, to trade against. We want to see a trending structure. So that's again not what I used to uh, to illustrate um, um, a textbook IPO and what to look for when it comes to the opening price or the opening print in this case, the IPO price. When it comes to round numbers, around which um, also institutional traders, um, also money managers, then um, trade. For example, and so the thing is uh, that trading-wise, that's not very attractive. Um, but the thing is, again, I already mentioned here, it's probably quick momentum opening drive trade. Even this is kind of not sure. I mean, well, you you could somehow trade somehow this this momentum momentum opening drive trade, but all in all, well, difficult. Um, but if you take now the time span here of one week and see this demand and these stabilization above the opening print, this is again, a strong sign. It's underlying our thesis. And this is what we want to take out of this IPO that the gaming sector is most likely hot, at least for now, depending somehow a little certainly on how things develop, but all in all, we can certainly agree that the um, um, gaming sector is right now hot. And so this is exactly what I point out here still, and despite being directly listed, demand for Roblox showed clear demand for the gaming stock. Again, this is now something we could just jump into um, of the top three gaming stocks or in an overall gaming market, how it looks like. But um, I don't want to leave the traders um, 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 out here and, and just focus on the investors. I really want to want to give um, add some some value in this context on uh, on the on the um, um, from trading perspective. So. Please excuse again. That was five minutes before I started, and it was like that was just a, a quick thought, and it was like 
well, why shouldn't we focus on traders um, um, here? And, and so it's just a screenshot um, based on um, a screen I made. And, and you can see here, these are, these are uh, German uh, notes I have within this chart to explain what happened there, but I will translate it to you so that you get a better idea and also um, a quick overview of um, where momentum could have been traded right from the open on the upside, for example, but also there was a key moment there when we dropped um, a certain level and how to um, actively trade um, IPOs. So first of all, we've seen, um, and there's a psychological reason for that. So the first print in coin around one week ago was at 381. And why is that a psychological level? Because um, if you followed the financial media, you've could, you, you could have seen that there was this market cap of 100 billion. That was a topic over and over and over again. And then um, around two hours, one and a half probably before um, the, the stock went public it was um, around 7 p.m. German time. So that's 8, 8 p.m. EET. Um, we've seen here uh, that there were, there were first indications showing that we had a price of around 340 to 350. So now what you could say is, okay, if I have um, 100 billion market cap as a psychological anchor, and I have now um, indications showing that 350 around 340, 350 um, 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 corresponds with a market cap of 90 billion, hmm. certainly there will be some opening drive potential, let's say, to bring us up to this psychological level um, to then 100 billion in market cap. And then what we could say is, well, what, what price is 300, uh, is 100 and, and, and um, um, 100 billion market cap? And that was around 380. So that means the first print at 380, 381, I think that was no surprise um, or it didn't surprise me at least that we opened here at this moment. But in addition to that, also given the current and recent volatility in the crypto space, Bitcoin just made a new all-time high pushing above 64,000 US dollar um, the day before. We had certainly a big, big focus on coin. Also right now, by the way, so we are um, uh, recording this on the 21st of, of April. Um, shortly before uh, here, I started this webinar. There was um, um, a news hitting my, my um, uh, ticker um, that Deutsche Börse, so the German, um, uh, the German, German um, um, stock exchange at Frankfurt, uh, they delist Coinbase on Friday. I'm not kidding. So on the 23rd, uh, 23rd of, of April, there will be a delisting of Coinbase shares in Frankfurt. Um, and that's due to the fact that Germans are just lovely people and they love bureaucracy. And uh, there is a number missing. It's the so-called Lie number. It's L-E-E. -E. Um, that's, um, this is a, a number which is, which is important from a, from a, um, a text perspective. And that's kind of a typo within it or something like that. It wasn't changed so far, so no one really uh, realized it. And then um, now they say, well, we don't have this line number, so we can't list the shares anymore. And they delisted it. So it's not a big deal, but it's at least something which uh, created some, some selling pressure in the pre-market here uh, in coin shares, uh, Coinbase shares. Um, and... Well, let's see how, how things develop there. Um, but this is just to 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 put this in perspective. Um, so let's come back to the to the opening price. So everyone's watching this this IPO. Everyone is is really focused on the IPO, and there's naturally some kind of let's call it um, FOMO taking place now. Now psychology starts to play a role. Um, FOMO is the fear of missing out, the fear of missing something, and um, not being in into this this. Um, 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 hot IPO into the crypto space and you can't lose money trading crypto. That's at least the current um, environment, the current BS you can, uh, you can really feel among market participants. And this alone results in the fact that there's this strong demand and resulting opening drive with also this push above 400 USD. So um, per share. So, so what you, what you see here is a first potential trade um, based on the opening once once the stock goes public that you have this psychological barrier around 400 us dollar beside this psychological aspect that 380 is um, 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 interesting from a market cap perspective 100 billion and then you have this 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 strong drive higher and then you have above 400 usd first kind of profit taking taking place and then something really fascinating happens you see the drop back below 400 and the blue line you can see here is, by the way, the uh, so-called volume weighted average price. We have to understand that once we have an IPO, there's no real um, 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 reference prices or something like that around. It's like um, it's, it's, it's just 
some candles, no patterns, nothing. You can only read the price action and, and also um, not just read the price action, but you have only the um, um, levels which everyone can see. It's the opening print. It's the low of the range so far. It's the high of the day or the high of the range of the trading range within this, this um, um, IPO is taking place. But this is everything you have. Um, so there's no, no uh, moving average or something like that, even though you can here calculate the so-called volume weighted average price. Um, so you have a price and then you multiply it with the underlying vo volume. And this is usually, um, um, this is usually a, a price which big institutional traders refer to, which means in this context that um, these market participants trade based on the VWAP in this case. And um, so what means that if, well, if, if we drop below that, it becomes, let's call it cheaper for them to now trade um, um, into the stock and build a position. So usually you would expect once we drop WeWeb in this context um, to see a quick bounce back above WeWeb if there is strong demand, which is not happening here. So, but in fact, we drop not just below 400 at a psychological level, but also be, be, be below WeWeb. And then you could see here that there was a quick, clear stabilization below 400. There was strong support apply um, into the um, um, into the market being given here and that was the first sign of which was um, that was probably um, um, an invitation to trade um, uh, coin here the stock short from from the short side um, you could have entered easily the trade I think around 397 with a stop above this um, consolidation around 403 and then you have a, um, a target of minimum 381. Where is 381 coming from? Well, it was the opening print. That's um, the, the, the first print of the stock from which this, this squeeze higher happened here. And then you see that we not just go for this run, which is, by the way, already resulting in a quite attractive risk reward trade here for two and a half, three to one in this context, but we drop 381. Remember, it's a direct listing. In case of a direct listing, you have no support from a tier one investment bank in this context. It's not happening. So this is like, if now there is no demand taking place, we are dropping to new lows and then it's just where is the market finding support? It's all-time lows. It's all-time territory. It's like like a, uh, like a black hole in which you're you're, you're staring here and there's no one um, um, hoping to 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 um, 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 support a dropping stock in this context. So we dropped this price. And after some consolidation, slightly below, but below the opening print, you have a next opportunity here to add to your existing position if you entered here after the drop and consolidation below 400. And then from there, it's like it was just completely collapsing and breaking down. That was all in addition to that, that's very important. You had also a very favorable environment, market environment in general for a dropping stock price here, given the um, selling pressure, which we could see in the NASDAQ in this context, and um, especially the tech sector, but also um, in case of the S&P 500, there, were, there was, for whatever reason, there was kind of a um, 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 sharper selling pressure, which also drove probably even more um, prices from this quite elevated um, um, stock price here when it comes to market capitalization, putting this in perspective from a, um, a revenue perspective, for example. So uh, that was that was what we what we saw there. And this is like a, um, this is like a trade to hold until reason to sell, we could call this. So you hold the trade until there's a reason to, to sell, until there's a change in character, which was taking place here and in, in this region around 310 to 320 around um, with the first time a green, in this case, M um, 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 one minute bar um, appearing here and pushing or stabilizing here the, the price. And in fact, that was that was the region around the lows. But this is a really great example on how clear IPOs could sometimes develop, especially once they are um, um, once once we we talk about direct listings where there is no this classic IPO support from a tier one investment bank in this context. So that's just on um, on the coin IPO and a better trade uh, trade related example. Even though now what we want to do is we want to have a look here at the global gaming sector because this is what our talk back today is about, and why we why we um, or what we want to what we want to focus on. Um, so let's have a look here. And by the way, let me just have a quick glance here into the chat box, but everything seems to be fine, which is beautiful because now I'm, I'm sure, let me just see here, um, that everything is 
Yeah, perfect. So thank you. Uh, looks fine for me now. Um, perfect. So everything uh, stays stays cool. Everything can be seen as as uh, you used to to see it in the past. There. Hopefully, and then around 10, 10 days. Um, that was the guy um, from the support. Uh, he told me that now I have to uh, send it over to them, and they will exchange the um, uh, the hard drive. And then, yeah. Well, finally, I, I get my my laptop back. And till then, I'll have to use here my my backup solution. But um, that's, you can imagine that's uh, kind of um, annoying, especially from a trading perspective, by the way. So um, just imagine we have today a quite hot day with, with uh, yesterday after markets, um, Netflix having, having released their earnings um, and disappointing, especially um, when it comes to the um, uh, um, net change in terms of paying um, streaming customers in this context. So we dropped like a stone 10% pre-market right now. Um, um, pre-market volume is around 20% of the average uh, daily traded volume there. So it's definitely a hot hot um, 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 market right now, hot stock, Netflix and 500 is a key level. Um, but I have to use here my my, my backup solution, which is not um, the optimal environment in which I want to trade. Um, but however, so let's have now a look at the global gaming sector here and focus on uh, on this, on this um, um, slide. So first of all, some fundamentals around this. So the global gaming market was um, in fact valued at 162.32 billion in 2020 and is expected to reach a value of 295, 300 billion by 26. So continues to grow and um, in fact nearly doubling its overall um, market value here within the next five six, five, five to six years. And that being said, uh, the video game um, industry here is close to be being a bigger money maker, in fact, than global movies. So with 100 billion per um, uh, $100 billion revenue in 2020 and the North American sports industries. Um, so here, Price Waterhouse Copus estimates that uh, we have around um, a revenue um, around 75 billion um, US dollar in 2020. So that being said, if you combine these two here, you have the global gaming market. In fact, it's a hot, um, hot um, um, sector right now. Esports is also something you probably have heard about. Um, and uh, in fact, just to give a beside an investment idea on, on the three upcoming um, hot um, gaming stocks here, a hot job right now is in fact game developer. So um, which means that, that uh, they, they they continually uh, strive to enhance uh, gamers' experience, launching and um, um, rewriting codes for uh, diverse console platforms, such as PlayStation, for example, Xbox, Windows PCs, uh, which are incorporated into one product here provided to the games through the cloud platform. And uh, here, the emergence of um, um, cloud gaming is driving the market. So NVIDIA, for example, added 19 games to its cloud in May 2020. And... Um, uh, and so what, what did I say? And another 18, I think, yeah, 18, something like that, um, six months uh, later. So we already talked about NVIDIA, especially when it came to the artificial intelligence um, sector here, but also when it comes here to the, to the gaming market. So that's one of the reasons why I also consider NVIDIA to be um, kind of an interesting um, um, longer term investment, in fact, even though I, right now, especially if you look at the parabolic move over the last weeks um, and then pushing to new all-time highs here above um, $600 for sure, I think, if I'm not mistaken, $640, $650. Um, I haven't followed the, the, the price action that closely, but I've seen that, that we pushed ex aggressively higher to new highs here. And um, yeah, probably it's not just the gaming sector driving prices higher here, but you can see that this is a broad field um, they, they, um, they work in. But it's not part of my top three gaming stocks, in fact. So my top three are uh, not just Roblox, but it's also Zynga, it's Activision Blizzard, and it's, well, it's NVIDIA. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, certainly it's NVIDIA. So it's not just um, 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 Roblox in this context. Certainly Roblox is one of the um, hottest IPOs, not just in, during the year, but um, Roblox is certainly also very interesting here from a, um, um, from a demand perspective, if you look at the chart, uh, but I, I'm sorry, it just, <laughs> so yeah, certainly also NVIDIA plays an important role here, even though it's not necessarily only to be considered from a gaming perspective. So um, since we are really talking about games here, gaming sector, then sometimes you might probably say, well, is NVIDIA really that 
such a gaming stock as you might expect it to be when looking at Zynga or if you look at Zynga or Activision Blizzard. By the way, you probably haven't heard about uh, these two, at least not um, um, here as the um, um, in the gaming context, but you probably have heard about the games. Um, they are, uh, they, oh, sorry, this is bad. Oh, it's a bad, this is really bad. I haven't exchanged the chart. Let me just, let me just change that one, one second. Let me just have a look here. Let me just have a look here. So um, I have to, I have to, to look up the chart. One second, please. So that we, that we have a chart here. One sec. So there's Zynga. And then we'll go here to the daily chart. So you can already see it here. I will, by the way, um, use these two charts here without any lines, but um, we will do the, the, the chart analysis within the chart, within the presentation. So that's the first one. And then again, we we'll also have to have a look here at, at the Activision Blizzard. You can see, by the way, um, already here, um, if, you, if you closely watched here the um, um, Zynga chart, you can see that that's um, quite positively correlated. And by the way, what we can also do, what we should definitely do is we also have to have to take here NVIDIA here. There you can say it, the, the push to new all time highs and also my, my overall bullish take. You probably remember that chart, we, we had a look at it. Um, so now we go back to the presentation here. So, so there we have it. I'm sorry, that was that was bad. Um, so let's come back to the fundamental. Let's come back to the the, the fundamentals here uh, when it comes to to Zinger. Um, so. Zinger is an uh, American social game developer uh, running social video game services founded in April 2007, known for Farmwell. Probably have heard about this. This is the game you can play via Facebook. I have to by the way, say, um, while I'm interested in the gaming sector of all due to the fact that it's hot, but I'm. if you ask me a question about any games being hot right now or something like that, it's definitely not the case that I can um, give further details on what exactly you aim on when, when playing Farmwell or something like that, or in case of um, 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 Atvi, respectively, um, uh, um, um, Activision Blizzard here, Call of Duty. So uh, it's, well, it, it's, it's, I, I, I've heard about these games, but it's not that I, that I consider them to be of um, any value add to my overall being or um, time. So I usually spend time reading a book or working out or playing with my kids, but not playing playing games. But um, I certainly know that, for example, um, uh, what's what's the English word for, for Neffe? This is like, um, it's the son of um, the sister of my wife. So it's, uh, I'm, I'm the uncle in this case. So yeah. So um, uh, here, um, 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 he's, he's playing these games day in and day out, especially when it come, comes to games like, like Call of Duty. But however, so um, Zynga is known for Farmwell, um, having a current market cap here of 12.7 billion. And uh, what's interesting, certainly interesting, is that the Q4 2020 high, um, um, showed the highest revenue here and bookings uh, performances in Zynga history with revenues um, of 616 million, up 52% year on year, and bookings of 699 million, up um, 61% year on year. And um, it posted a record online game or user pay in this context here, revenue of 499 million, which was up 54% year on year and user pay bookings of 582 million, which was up 64% year on year, 64 year on year, which is all in all perfectly illustrating how much demand there is obviously. And the longer this lockdown mode 
continues and the more use people getting to stay at home, um, I think the better the overall outlook that people stay in. Yeah, it's not their necessarily comfort zone, but in their behavior pattern, staying at home naturally resulting in stronger demand for such online games, for example, obviously pointing um, to form for future growth for companies like Zynga in this context. And as you can see here, so now we, we screenshotted the chart. Um, and by the way, unfortunately, can you see that? Unfortunately, I think, no, it's uh, like here. So there's some, um, I mean, you, can, you can see the price, but um, the thing is right now, Zynga, let me just, let me just see, is it possible to probably get it that way? Let me just see so that we have, yeah, I think that's better. That's probably better. Um, so that we have a lead as price here um, on the on the right side. Um, so I'm sorry. So this is Zynga. Hmm. Uh, I'm an expert. So that was that was Atvi. It's not Zynga. So one second. So we go here again. There we go. Um, so there we have it. So right now, um, the stock is, is consolidating above um, uh, $10, 10 USD per share. Um, as you can see here, we, we already started here from around $8, saw a run up to or from 50% over a time span here of um, um, the last six months. And right now, the market is kind of topping out. But what's certainly interesting is that we found support here around 950 and right here can consolidate above a 10. So which means that if we can now hold 10 and break above 11 again, um, that's first, in my opinion, at least a first positive sign, which is um, pointing to further upside here, which could then push us as high as 12, 1250, 13 within the um, next months. In fact, depending still, on the overall developments. We have to understand that, especially Zynga, we are looking here at a, um, a growth company right now, which means that once we see kind of a risk aversion move um, um, or market participants deleveraging, it could result in a sharper decline in the stock price. Um, as, you've, as you've probably seen here, um, oh, well, even though we have to say, I mean, that, that clearly depended um, also, or was dependent on the overall stock price of something like seven um, um, USD. The thing is, probably, I mean, um, you probably recall the the uh, one of our last um, webinars we had on um, how to invest in it during recession. You probably recall that I've also not just um, made classic value companies a topic there. Um, like, for example, Coca-Cola or something like that, but also that I talked about um, um, companies like Netflix, for example. And the thing is that um, you need kind of um, not excitement, but entertainment. So entertainment usually sells quite well during times of recession, um, which is one of the reasons why I'm, I, I consider Zynga to be, to be a growth company, certainly, but still, I think... Um, Due to the um, um, fact that that they're that they're entertainment, that they're within the entertainment business, and this is usually something which is of highest importance during times of a recession, especially once once uh, the recession is um, resulting out of a of a pandemic and people have to stay home due to the risk of um, being or contracting the virus in this context. I think that that um, Zynga probably has some, um, even though there is certainly some downside potential, but it's um, limited downside potential. Probably we could call. This. this is, by the way, not just true for Zynga, but it's also true for for Atvi. I'm, I'm sorry, this is now a little unfortunate because um, now I've I've um, um, put the, the um, chart here over over the text, but um, we go through this, and I think it's 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 fine. It's it's not necessary that we change this. So Actin uh, Act <laughs> Activation Blizzard. Is, Amer is an American video game holding uh, um, um, company founded in July 2008. So also over a decade into the industry right now. And you probably have heard about Call of Duty in this context, but also World of Warcraft. Um, and has a current market cap significantly higher than the one of Zynga in this context um, of 74.56 billion. And Activision Blizzard um, released its earnings um, data on uh, February 3rd and reported um, 1.21 USD earnings per shares for um, the, the quarter for Q4-21, Q, um, um, I'm sorry, Q4-20. Um, 
and it um, 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 there it was a clear beating of um, consensus estimate, which was um, 118. Um, and um, in addition to that, um, Activision Blizzard also has generated 2.08 earnings per share over the last year here, and currently has a price to earnings ratio of 33.8, which is kind of low considered the overall market environment in which we find ourselves in. I mean, especially when it looks when we look at growth companies. So to be honest, it kind of looks undervalued. And, um, and in addition to that, we have also revenue, um, which um, here was also a surprise beat um, on the upside. Um, 3.05 billion, that was the revenue which, which was um, um, released. And then uh, it, it has beaten here the um, um, estimate by around a quarter billion in this context. So but let's have a look here at the chart in this context and, and look at the price action. So also here, you can already see the, the, the positive correlation to um, a stock like Zynga, for example. So also somehow topping out, even though there's clear demand, as you can see, around 88 USD here. So And we have tested this region several times. So again, this is now a crucial level. So if we drop 88, then I'd um, certainly expect a deeper run, probably in the mid to lower 70s in this context, even though if we can hold and find support here and, and demand comes in and holds the stock above 88, that's usually a positive sign. And once we push back above 100, I'm, I really I have um, 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 further upside potential, which is probably easily pushing us at high... Uh, up to highs around 120, probably 130. Same um, idea here, probably um, even more than in, in Zynga due to the higher market cap in this context. And again, entertainment being of high value or seeing stronger demand during times of recession. And um, so here now we have NVIDIA and we don't want to do, dig too deep into NVIDIA, in fact. So we already had a special webinar on this topic. Um, probably want to... to um, um, Look back at, at what we looked at, respectively, to give a, deter, a detail, more detailed look on, on the overall fundamentals. Um, we know already that um, NVIDIA is an American multinational company, um, and um, which was already founded in 1993. It's known for graphic processing units, GPUs, GeForce, for example, um, well positioned in the AI, AI space, artificial intelligence, and current market cap is $322 billion. I, during our um, special webinar on NVIDIA, the last Hot Topic webinar we had here on, on, on the company, um, I said that I could imagine it. it's kind of, um, I'm, I'm very positive for the stock and the overall outlook for the stock. And I could easily imagine due to their, their positioning within the um, um, tech segment here, uh, that this is what probably the next 1 trillion uh, USD company and has further upside here on the upside, which is well, certainly kind of surprising because a 1 trillion market cap in this context means that we have 300% um, uh, upside here uh, from the current um, market cap. Earnings per share, um, last numbers which were um, published for Q420 were uh, 310 versus um, 281 expected, revenue 5 billion versus 4.82 billion expected. And uh, within this release, they also announced that um, uh, they, um, they announced that recently new graphics cards designed for mining crypto cryptocurrencies like Ethereum, for example, um, uh, could, could certainly, due to the um, um, demand for crypto right now, cryptocurrencies in general, um, it could result in, um, uh, in, a, in a boost for the stock due to the stronger demand from the gaming sector, respectively the gamers who want the same cards to run graphically intense um, games in this context. So um, as you can see, they're, they're well positioned in the overall whole market context. Um, again, they are a um, multi-technology company in several areas, very, very active. And uh, that being said, I think NVIDIA is, is um, definitely a hot pick here. And when it comes also to the gaming sector in general, um, um, even though I, I mainly look for NVIDIA and, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm um, favoring NVIDIA here from a, from a trading respectively investment perspective uh, due to the aspect or due to the fact that, that the company is very strong positioned within the artificial intelligence of sector two. And um, so these are my top three picks. So it's um, Zynga, it's Atvi, Activision Blizzard, and it's uh, NVIDIA in this context. And uh, that brings us to the summary of today's uh, presentation. 
So the global gaming market was, as I already pointed out, valued at 162.3 billion in 2020 and is expected to reach um, a value of 295.63 billion um, by 26. That being said, the video game industry is um, close to uh, being a bigger money maker um, than the global movie industry here with a revenue of around 100 billion in uh, 20 and the North American sports industry um, where Price Water has Cooper, um, Price Water House, Price Water. House Cooper, yeah. However, PVC, PWC um, estimates um, a 75 billion um, um, revenue here in 20. And um, that being said, um, brings us to uh, the question: Okay, which gaming stocks are hot? I think in the gaming sector, especially Zynga, Activision Blizzard, Roblox. In addition to that, and also Nvidia, are um, definitely um, worth a deeper look. And uh, yeah, so that's it on the on the um, gaming sector. And uh, now what I want to do is we want to go over, I'm sorry, we want to go over here to the website, admirals.com and click. So, and here, um, have a look at the upcoming webinar. I want to uh, give you an idea on uh, where you can find here the um, webinar. So it's admirals.com. And then you go to the Educations tab, Forex and CFD webinars. And um, if you click on this, then you will be directed to our webinar page. So that one is currently live, as you can see. Every day, starting the trading day with Marcus together at 8.30 um, Central European um, um, Summertime, CEST. Um, and then here on Friday, Again, same time, 2 p.m. London in this context, how to improve your trade entries. That will be a topic which um, Paul will talk about. And uh, then next week on, on, on Wednesday, so one week from now, uh, Paul will be here again with this shift in power from West to East in this context, obviously talking about the US and then uh, a power shift probably to um, over to, to, to China. And um, so here again, the... Contact details. If you have any questions around Admirals, feel free to reach out to Admirals directly. Um, give us a like, a thumb up on YouTube. Uh, that would be nice. Um, also, um, feel free to, to contact us via um, Facebook in this context. And as I said at the beginning, fully regulated broker. So here's a risk disclaimer at the end of this web presentation. And um, that's it from my end. I wish you all the best. Happy trading. Watch your stops. Again, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you follow this now on YouTube. If you uh, watch the recording, leave a comment in the chat box below. I'm really happy to answer your questions there. And um, that's it from my end. So all the best. Happy trading. Watch your stops. See you next week on Friday. And um, all the best.